What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we're going to be discussing the question of who is the Josh Jacobs of the 2023 fantasy football season. Basically, this is a running back that's being drafted outside of the top three, maybe even the top four rounds that has top five breakout potential at the running back position, just like Josh Jacobs was. So definitely make sure to tune in. If you enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. Let us hear in the comment section. Do you agree, disagree? Who would you compare a uh, to Josh Jacobs this year, along with any other questions you guys might have. We will do our best to answer them all. But with that being said, let's get right into it. And here, I just want to start out looking at the 2023 fantasy football draft rankings per fantasy pros. This is PPR based, uh, just so we can get a feel of where Josh Jacobs kind of stands as of right now uh, in terms of value. So as you can see, Josh Jacobs comes in at the number 10 spot. So a top 10 player, you know, Uh, Across the board, pretty much, uh, running backs, wide receivers, he's the running back seven. So what does that mean? Well, basically, uh, a lot of people expect him to do something similar to last year, which, as a reminder, he finished as a top five running back after being drafted, you know, uh, well, definitely outside of that. And, you know, with the amount of mock drafts that we've done, That basically means he is a slam dunk for an early second round selection and sometimes even a first round selection being a top 10 player. Kind of just depends uh, potentially on how running back heavy your league might be. But, you know, let's kind of break down why Josh Jacobs had some success last year. And the way we're going to do that is let's look at some stats. So with Josh Jacobs, you know, one of the first things that we have to understand, uh, going down to 2022, he pretty much had career bests across the board. But why was that the case? So the biggest thing with Josh Jacobs last year is he kind of had a prove it year. You know, I don't want to say that the Raiders were going to potentially run him into the ground, that type of situation, but they were ready to do so. It was potentially his, you know, maybe last year with the Raiders. And if he showed out, okay, he'd get paid or franchised, which is what happened. But, you know, up until then, we hadn't seen uh, that superstar production from Josh Jacobs. We knew that there was upside, um, but it hadn't quite come together. And if you look at last year, I mean, look, he had career highs, again, pretty much across the board. Attempts, rushing attempts, 340 rushing attempts, 70 higher than his previous career best, which was 273. 1,650 rushing yards, which is 500 better than his previous career best as a rookie at 1,150. He tied his career high in rushing touchdowns with 12. And then in terms of receiving yards uh, and receptions, this is where he really took a, you know, a step up or at least maintain the high production from the year prior. He had 53 receptions compared to 54 the year prior, 400 receiving yards, Uh, didn't actually have any receiving touchdowns. And all of this kind of culminated to a top five running back season, whereas he was being drafted outside of the, you know, top three, top four rounds. People didn't really want to invest a high pick in him. You know, we had seen average to above average production, but there were consistency issues. Uh, He wasn't being utilized enough his first two years as a pass catcher. You know, in 2021, when he did, it's kind of because there were injuries, but the coaches saw the upside and they said, look, he's by far and away the best running back that we have. Uh, It's going to go through Josh Jacobs. And they really, really fed him the football, as you see with these rushing attempts. Now, on top of that, the Raiders had a decent offensive line. They had an above average quarterback in Derek Carr, who could spread the football out to a lot of offensive weapons that they had, including Guys like a Devontae Adams, Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro. So that opened things up for Josh Jacobs to do his thing. So I mentioned all of these things to kind of compare to who else might be in this type of position heading into this year. So somebody that's the clear cut number one running back on their team. Somebody that has shown us that they have similar type of upside on the ground and as a pass catcher as well. Because if you want to finish in the top five, you need to be 
you know, a versatile running back more often than not, unless you just kill it on the ground and have uh, a lot, a lot of touchdown success. Um, And then somebody that is, you know, uh, again, on a team with a good offensive line, improved offensive play, uh, and he's going to get the opportunities. So the more and more I ask myself that question, the more and more I come across the same name. And that name is one Miles Sanders of the Carolina Panthers, formerly of the Philadelphia Eagles. But even before we look at the stats for Miles Sanders uh, last year with Philly, let's kind of look at it from just an opportunity perspective. So yes, Sanders uh, pretty much had his best year as a pro in 2022. And the Philadelphia Eagles didn't want to pay him. So what does that mean? He enters free agency. The Panthers know Christian McCaffrey. They traded him last year. They lose Deonta Foreman in free agency. They needed a workhorse running back and they paid Miles Sanders as such. Now, they pretty much gave him a multi-year deal. One of the best deals in free agency at the running back position. He became immediately one of the highest paid running backs to get signed this year. Uh, And again, the fact that it wasn't just a one-year deal tells you that the Panthers, uh, you know, have some long-term plans with Miles Sanders. And, you know, it's not quite the same situation with the Raiders where this could potentially be his last year. So they're going to run him into the ground. But, you know, in, in, in some sense, after you pay a running back as much as the Panthers did, uh, you're going to want to pretty quickly get the most out of him as you can. You know, running backs have a short shelf life. So it's I really do think it's going to be pedal to the metal. Uh, and the biggest thing here is Miles Sanders is by far and away the most versatile, uh, the most talented, and the most proven running back the Panthers have. Outside of Miles Sanders, it's Chuba Hubbard, who, you know, he's been okay in filler roles, but it's nothing to write home about. And again, it's been purely backup roles. That was the case when it was Deonta Foreman. That was the case when it was Christian McCaffrey. I mean, Chuba Hubbard didn't really beat out Deonta Foreman last year. So let's also not forget that. Now, again, I'm not saying that Miles Sanders is going to be Christian McCaffrey 2.0. That's almost impossible. And, you know, for a lot of people in this league, but he can be the next Josh Jacobs. And let's look at why. We kind of went into the opportunity in terms of, why he will be clearly the number one guy in Carolina. On top of that, there are former Philly connections in Carolina on the coaching staff, so they feel very comfortable with Miles Sanders. Now, in terms of rushing attempts, you know, to hit over that 300 yard mark or 300 attempt mark, uh, is it possible? Well, I mean, look at this. Last year, he got 259, so call it 260 attempts, which was a lot higher than any of his years prior. Now, a lot of that has to do with a very high-octane Philly offense, but those numbers could have been a lot higher in years uh, past. You know, Miles Sanders had to contend with guys like a Jalen Hurts the running back or at the quarterback position that's going to take away opportunities, take away touchdown opportunities as well, and with guys like Kenneth Gainwell, Boston Scott. Uh, but in Carolina, not a lot of those similar type of worries. Bryce Young, again, quarterback um, upgrade to compared. Uh, to what the Panthers had last year in Baker Mayfield, uh, Sam Darnold. So that's a check. Uh, On top of that, you know, there's not going to be a similar type of situation where he's getting as vultured as he did in Philadelphia. So I really do expect, at a minimum, those attempts to stay uh, at that number. I definitely don't expect him to go lower. And I think they are going to get close to 300, if not higher. In terms of rushing yards, Again, similar to Josh Jacobs, we have seen that Miles Sanders has that upside. Last year, almost 1,300 rushing yards. The Panthers are a team that are going to look to run the football. That has been their MO, you know, quietly. They have a very good offensive line. I would say top 10 offensive line in the NFL. Um, And with Bryce Young being a rookie quarterback, they're not going to want to put it all on his shoulders. They're going to want to put, uh, you know, some pressure on the running backs. And again, we mentioned receiving work. In his rookie season, Miles Sanders had 50 receptions. Afterwards, it went down, but that was because the way he was utilized. We've already heard coaches in Carolina say that, yeah, we've seen you catch 50 balls before. 
you can do it again. Uh, and those receiving yards, his rookie year, 509 receiving yards. So the upside is there. Um, I really do think we're going to see those opportunities. You look at it in terms of this offense. They added guys like Adam Thielen. Sure, they lost DJ Moore, um, but you've got Thielen. You've added a Jonathan Mingo in the draft. You know, you've added some crafty veterans, but I think Miles Sanders is definitely still at the top of that list as well. Like outside of Adam Thielen, Miles Sanders is one of the more experienced guys offensively here uh, at the pass catching level too. So I don't think it's crazy to see him be somebody uh, that's going to potentially be second or third on this team in terms of, you know, uh, one of those heavily targeted guys uh, as far as pass catchers are concerned. So I'm really excited about that. That that opportunity combined on the ground and through the air is definitely there. Uh, I think we're going to see over a thousand yards on the ground. Again, to me, these rushing attempts are going to go up. Uh, I think the touchdowns, we've seen last year double digit touchdowns. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities here. You know, we look at it from a perspective of can he improve the stats from 2022? I definitely think he can. I think right now the reason why Miles Sanders isn't getting a lot of love is he went from the Philadelphia Eagles, who, you know, they were in the Super Bowl for God's sakes last year, to the Panthers, who picked Bryce Young first overall. Uh, the Panthers aren't a sexy team, but they can get the job done. And, you know, kind of as a refresher, let's see where Miles Sanders kind of stacks up right now in terms of, you know, top players. We have to scroll all the way down. Number 41 overall, running back 18. That's kind of comparable to where Josh Jacobs was last year. You know, Miles Sanders is being drafted typically at the start of the fourth round, something like that. So ADP wise, that hits uh, where Josh Jacobs was being taken last year. And the upside is definitely, definitely there. You know, I would rather have a Miles Sanders over a... For example, Jameer Gibbs, who's a rookie and has to contend with a David Montgomery. I would rather have Miles Sanders over an Aaron Jones, who has to contend with A.J. Dillon and no more Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I'd rather have Miles Sanders than a Najee Harris, who has a question at the quarterback position, question at the offensive line, and they've been talking up a Jalen Warren. I think you can even make the case with guys coming off of injuries, like a Brees Hall, for example. I really, really like the upside of Miles Sanders. And the best thing is, he will not cost you all that much. You know, you're getting a true RB1 in the fourth round. That is an absolute steal. So in my opinion, you know, the answer is a clear one. Josh Jacobs 2.0, that is Miles Sanders for this 2023 fantasy football season. The opportunity will be there. The rushing attempts will go up. The receiving uh, possibilities are through the roof. He is the unquestioned number one guy. Watch out for a Miles Sanders breakout year. Just because other people are sleeping on him does not mean you should. He is the Josh Jacobs of this 2023 fantasy football season. Uh, look, that's pretty much all we got. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. Let us hear in the comment section. Do you agree, disagree along with any other questions you guys might have? We'll do our best to answer them all. But in the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.